In part one, we are going to try to explain why f inverse exists. And that will mean that we have to prove that f is a one-to-one -one function. And to do that, we are going to try to make use of a horizontal line test. So I'm going to try to sketch the graph of this first, y is equal to fx. And to sketch the graph of this, this is a graph of rational function. So we will be expecting a horizontal asymptote because it is a degree one divided by degree one. Then we will also be expecting a vertical asymptote. Let me try to sketch in the asymptotes first. So let's try to draw the axis and this is very very slanted. Let me draw it again. So this is going to be the y-axis not the x-axis. So this will be the y-axis and the x-axis. Let me draw it horizontally. So here we have uh, x-axis. So it has a vertical asymptote and since a is between 0 to 1, the vertical asymptote is x is equal to a, we will have this on the positive side. So we have this. Okay, and this will represent for me the vertical asymptote x is equal to a. And we will have a horizontal asymptote. I just need to take the coefficient of the highest power, which is a, divided by the coefficient of the highest power in the denominator, which is 1. So the horizontal asymptote is a, and a is between 0 to 1. So it is a positive number. I'm going to draw the horizontal asymptote here. Okay, so now we have a y is equal to a. And of course, we can also try to do a long division in order for us to re-express this into another form where we can look at the horizontal and the vertical asymptote. But I did it with observation here. So I can also try to let a be equal to, let's say, 0 0.5. I'll press this into the calculator to give me a rough shape of how the graph looks like. And if I were to reference that to the calculator, the graph looks something that is like this. So this part of the graph will be like this. Okay, you will tend towards the horizontal asymptote. And as for this part of the graph, it is going to be like this. Cutting here, and then here, and then tending towards the vertical asymptote. The coordinates of this point, if I were to let y be equal to 0, I'm going to get x to be equal to minus 7a. So the coordinates of this point will be minus 7a, 0. So it will be for this. And as for this, I'm going to let x be equal to 0 and I'm going to get y to be equal to negative 7a also. So 0, negative 7a as the y coordinate. So this that we have here is the graph of y is equal to fx. And by looking at this graph, we can observe that any horizontal line is going to be cutting at only one point. So we can now say something that is like this. Since a uh, horizontal line y is equal to k, where k is going to take up the complete set of values that is going to be output from the function, so that is the range of the function. So for the horizontal line y is equal to k, where k belongs to the full range of the function of the of fx, then this horizontal line is going to be cutting the graph at only one point. So I'll say this line cuts the graph of y is equal to fx at only one point. Therefore, we can say that f is a one-to-one -one function, one-to-one -one function. And this tells us that f inverse exists. Okay, this is how I have explained the existence of f inverse. Next, we want to try to show that f is self inverse. And according to the question, when a function is self inverse, then f is equal to f inverse. So let's try to find first the expression of f inverse by letting y be equal to f x. y will be equal to this expression over here, which is ax plus 7a squared divided by x minus a, where x cannot be equal to a. This is the domain of the function f, and x definitely cannot be equal to a because if x is equal to a, the denominator is going to be equal to zero. Anyway, this is our analysis. We can just take it as uh, given information that is by the question. We're going to make x the subject, so cross multiplying this over, we have xy minus ay. This is equal to ax plus 7a squared. Bring this over to the left hand side, we have uh, xy minus ax. Bring this over to the right hand side. This is equal to ay plus 7a squared. So x is going to be equal to ay plus 7a squared 
divided by y minus a. This tells us that f inverse expression is going to be equal to, I'm going to replace all the y here by x. So it's going to be ax plus 7a square divided by x minus a, which is actually the same as the expression for f. But this is not going to this is not going to be enough for us to show that f inverse f is self inverse. In order for us to do that, we must also try to code the domain of f inverse. And what is the domain of f inverse? It is the same as the range of f. And what is the range of f? Let's take our let's take a look at our graph. So from the graph, what are all the possible output from the graph? What are all the possible y coordinates from the graph? It is going to be from minus infinity all the way until a, but not inclusive of a or from a all the way until positive infinity. And what is this? This is actually exactly the same as the domain of f that is given to us by the question. So we have proven that the expression of f inverse, let me write this properly, this is the expression for f inverse, it is the same as the expression for f, and the domain of f inverse is the same as the domain of f. So therefore, we can then conclude that f is the same as f inverse. This tells us that f is self inverse self inverse okay and this is what we are trying to show in part two we are supposed to find f241 of 1 over a f241 is f trying to composite itself 241 times and to evaluate this we want to try to see whether there's going to be a pattern when f starts to composite itself let's start with f2 f2x is like f f x and by making use of what we have just derived in part one we know that f is self inverse which means that f is the same as f inverse so we have this what is f f inverse x this is x let's move on to f 3x f 3x is like f compositing itself three times so it's like f and f and f which is f 2x Okay, so this is compositing itself three times. And what is F2? F2 from the previous part is X. So I'm going to replace F2X by X. So now we have deduced that F3X is Fx. It seems like there's a pattern that's going on here. Let's try to write down another composite function, F4X. F4X is like putting F3X into Fx. So if putting F3X into F, what is f3? f3 is f. So we have a f, f, x. And what is f, f, x? It is f2, x. And this gives me an x. Let's go for one more. f5, x. f5, x is like putting f4 into f. And what is f4? f4 is x. So this is f, x. So what is the pattern that we are seeing here as we try to list down f2, f3, f4, f5? It is when it is f2, even, it is x. f3, it is fx. Even, it is x. Odd, it is going to be fx. So what about f241? 241 by itself is odd, so we will be expecting the same pattern that is going to be applied. So f241 is going to be the same as fx. And now we can find f241 of 1 over a, which is to just simply let all the x be 1 over a. So this is the same as f of 1 over a, which is equal to, let's replace all these x here by 1 over a, okay? So it will be a times of 1 over a plus 7a squared divided by x, which is 1 over a, then minus a. And I'm going to multiply a and a in both the numerator and the denominator. So a multiplying by 1, it is going to give me an a plus 7a to the power of 3. And as for the denominator, this multiplied by this gives me a 1 minus a to the power of 2. For part three, let's try to discuss whether fg exists. Okay, in fact, it exists because the question requires us to show that it exists. So I'm going to make use of the same schematic that we have discussed in uh, the Achievers TV theory outline, which is for the function fg, if I can just imagine it as one function g that is like this, and then whatever that comes out from g is going to head towards f because function fg is from inside out. 
Okay, we read it from inside out. So X will go into G, then G, whatever that comes out from G will go into F. So this is what that is happening. Whatever that comes out from G will go into F. So in order for this to happen, we want to make sure that everything that comes out from G, they can be all going into F. So the range of G should be a subset of the domain of F. Let's try to prove this. We do know what is the domain of F. It is already given to me by the question. It is from minus infinity to A or from A to infinity. But what we don't know so far is the range of G. So let's try to find out the range of G by drawing the graph of Y is equal to GX. So if I were to just do a quick sketch of the graph, it is going to look something that is like this. Okay, this is going to be a hollow dot, which is at a point when x is equal to 3. And when x is equal to 3, we have y to be equal to, we have g at, g3 to be equal to 4. So this will be my graph of y is equal to gx, where this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. So looking at this graph, we know that we can see that the range of g Okay, all the possible y coordinates will be from 4 all the way until infinity. So if 4 all the way until infinity is the range of g, and as for the domain of f, which is given to us by the question, it is from minus infinity all the way until a, or from a all the way until infinity. But we do know something about a. A is actually given to me by the question as a number that is between 0 to 1. So if A is between 0 to 1, we can just sort of like imagine the whole thing happening on a number line. So let's say this is a number line that represents the input. Input is, for example, X. Um, and 4 is here. Okay, 4 is here. So the range of G is going to be from 4 all the way until infinity. As for the domain of F, a, a is a number that is between 0 to 1. So A is a number that is going to be on the left-hand side of 4. So for this, it cannot be equal to A, but it can be equal to everything else. So it's going to the left and all the way to the right. So we can see that 4 to infinity is going to be a subset of everything from the left to the right except A, which means that now we can say that the range of G is a subset of the domain of F. So therefore, we can then conclude that F, G, here it exists. Okay, and this is what we are trying to show, show, so shown. Next, we want to find the exact range of F, G. So we are going to try to analyze what that comes out from here. So if you are trying to see what that is coming out from here, I'm going to once again make use of what we have discussed on the Achievers TV theory outline. So if I'm going to try to arrange this by itself, if I were to try to look at F by itself, for f by itself, we know what that is going into f now. What is going to into f now is actually what that comes out from g. And what that is coming out, what is that is coming out from g is the range of g. So it is this set of value, 4 to infinity, that is going to be going into the function f. So when this goes into the function f, what that comes out from the function f is going to be the range of the composite function f g. That was why we need to refer back to, that is why we need to refer back to the graph that we have in part one by imposing the input into the function from to be from four to infinity. We are going to be getting the output to be the range of fg. So if I were to look at this graph again, four, four is a number that is going to be bigger than a because a is between zero to one, right? So four is going to be, let's say somewhere here, four. So we want to find out what is f4. Let's try f4 f4 is by letting x be equal to 4. So we have a 4a plus 7a square divided by 4 minus a. So this is the output. Okay, so here we have the output. This is f4. And we're looking at from 4 all the way until infinity to be the input. Okay, 4 all the way until the infinity to be, to be the input. So it is actually from here all the way until infinity which means that the part of the graph that is going to be affected will be just this portion of the graph, which means that this will be all the possible output. And this will be all the possible output, which means that it's going to be starting from this, A, okay? Because this value here is A. So it's going to be from A all the way until F4. So this is the output. This is going to give us the range of the composite function f, g. And we can see that it is going to be starting from here all the way until here. Here, it cannot be equal to the value. The value is actually a. Let me just erase this so that it's easier for you to see. The value here is a. So it's going to be from a 
all the way until this value here, which is f four. F four we have found it is four a plus seven a squared divided by four minus a. It cannot be equal to a this y value, so I'm going to use a curve bracket. And in fact, here it is going to be strictly bigger than four. So here is going to be a hollow dot also. So it cannot be equal to this value, so I'm going to use a curve bracket. So now we have deduced from the graph that we have sketched in part one the range of fg so let me write it down here to give my final answer this is going to be from a this is going to be from a all the way until this which is f4 it is 4a plus 7a square divided by 4 minus a mm -hmm.